The following is an analysis, interpretation, and summary of James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. Chapter 5. The best way to start a new habit. So in this chapter of Atomic Habits, we're going to cover now how do you actually, like, how do we get past the start? Because a lot of people just like, that's the hardest point is beginning. And they often look for things like motivation to spark them. But motivation is the spark. You need the fuel. And the fuel often is a framework of understanding really strong identity, congruency with who you are and what you want to be and what you're aiming at and a really positive, constructive, well-designed environment to help you to succeed. Just like a couple of the things that can help you keep the fuel going when things get difficult. So we're going to talk about some different strategies that James Clear goes through on how do we actually optimize like the starting of the habit so and maximize the adherence because consistent imperfection is better than sporadic perfection. A lot of people, and I know the old me used to be like, no, if I can't do the ta- task, I got to do the task like really, really well. Like I got to have like 90, 95%, 100% of the information before I start. And I would use this. This would be my procrastination. I would justify uh, not doing something yet. I need to have all the information first. I need to make sure I get tick this box, tick this box. No. When I read... Um, Jeff Bezos' uh, Amazon letters that Tim Ferriss has distributed in a nice PDF, one thing that really struck me was take action. He was taking action with limited information consistently. His ethos, to summarize it, was like, I'm going to... I don't need 95% of the information, 90%. Like, if I can just get the majority, if I can just get the 80-20 Pareto's Law, like, if I can just get, you know... At least half of the information, 80% of the information, it would be, an, I can make a decision now much quicker than if I was just, if I waited to get that last 10, 15, 20%, because that time you're gonna wait to start to get all the information. I'm gonna watch all the atomic habit summaries that Alexander's done before I do any of the, the, the tasks that he, uh, has purported to do the strategies and the little reflections. I'm going to go through all these videos before I buy the book. I'm like, what? You like stop and recognize that it's just another justification for procrastination, right? You think you're tricking is you think, oh yeah, I'm going to do it. This is positive. I'm still learning. But you're mistaking activity for for productivity, right? You're mistaking activity for progress and they're not the same thing because you can be mindless in your activity. You can be constantly chasing new information. And so Bezos, he was like, you know, if even if you make a mistake with limited information, you can pivot quicker and make an adjustment and still be ahead of the curb than if you waited for 95, 100% in the information and weren't going to make a mistake because the pivot, if you can make a quick pivot and make a quick decision and change from a mistake or an error in judgment that you make, it's still almost always going to be quicker. And so that's the utility to doing, taking action with less information instead of waiting for things to be perfect. And I think We've all been there. We've all done that. I know I was waiting until my, I was getting, I got, got, a, got into a new environment in where I am now in this home before I begun these chapters. And you know, I can rationalize it, right? But a part of that is an justification, procrastination excuse that I could have begun these quicker. I could have done these at my old place, right? Of course I could have. Whatever justifications I have, I'm not going to bore you with them. I chose to wait and do them here, but recognizing myself that these could have been pretty much done already. You could have seen these six months ahead of time if I didn't want it a certain way. It's the way it is, okay? But like, how far do you want to take it? Do I want to wait until I hang up all the stuff on the walls behind me and make my space perfect? Or am I just going to go? I'm just like, all right, man, I just got to go. I put the books in the bookcase and I, I centered it all up and the space ain't perfect, but it's good enough is good enough because I know the potential, you know, you know the, the environment you're around is very important. The potential you have to make a space, an environment, and a situation better before you start something. But at some point, you just have to go. So 
Let's go through this now. Maximizing adherence implementation, implementation intention. If you want to dramatically increase your adherence to something, you want to do what you need to do to create an implementation intention, which is simply a plan on when and where you will act. That's all that is. I could have just said that. Implementation intention is a plan on when and where you will act. You will do the behavior. So you need to distinguish the time, when, and the location. Many people think they lack motivation, but what they lack is a structure and a plan to execute their discipline. Once an implementation intention has been set, you don't have to wait for motivation or the right time or ask yourself, when will I do something? You don't need to make the decision in the moment because you've already made a plan. So all you need to do is follow your predetermined plan. This is incredibly powerful to me because it's like, I don't think about when I'm gonna eat, what I'm gonna eat, where I'm gonna train, what my program is, psh, what else? Uh, how long I'm gonna be in the sauna, my morning, like my routine in the morning, I don't think about like the, what I'm putting in my shake, like, I got the structure, framework, and routine. And, like, I'm not a robot where, like, I'm doing the same thing every day. Like, you have alterations. You're not, you, you don't necessarily have to eat the same thing or do the same thing every day for years on end. But you have things you can structurally change. You even have a plan for the pivots. Does that make sense? So, it's like, what if I want to do something different? What if I flip up my day? Like, you have a plan for that too. Okay, so... If you want to do something, like I don't have time for, because like I work with like uh, as a coach, I, like, I coach people and I you hear the thing, right? I don't have time, right? I don't hear that much anymore because I have a very, uh, my coaching process kind of eliminates and uses a lot of these tools from Atomic Habits and behavior learning uh, to where I rarely hear that I don't have time. Um, but you hear it from people, you hear it from and they'll say, I don't have time to do X, to, to, to prep food, to eat, to, like, to train, to do the behavior that you want to do, to read, to cycle, whatever. I like, I like giving various examples because I, someone's going to hit somebody. Everyone can relate to at least probably one of them. And so you say, oh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the gym tomorrow. Okay. You can't just say that. It most likely will not get done. Like there is less of a chance of it getting done than there is it getting done unless you have an implementation intention where you say, I will go to the gym at this gym at this time and even better, which James doesn't talk about after, well, he does because it's called habit stacking, after I do this. So after I do this behavior, after I do 45 minutes of morning calls in the morning. I will put on the gym clothes that I will have already in the room next to me. Q. Craving. Go to the gym. Response. Get to the gym. Reward. Train. You see? So this is how you can kind of hack your environment right there. And you can structure a when and where after doing something. And if you if you just like if, I, if you're struggling with any behavior, if you just start holding yourself accountable to asking that question, you can put up little little pin notes like uh, in your environment so you can see and remember to ask that question like a whiteboard. When, where, after what behavior, right? I will. Here's the formula. I will insert behavior at time, at location, and then I'm going to add for you after behavior. After I like, I will brush my teeth at 7:30 a.m. in the bathroom after my alarm goes off and I wake up. <laughs> Obviously, it's like it's like yeah, good one for children, okay. Uh, but insert whatever one you want. Next, habit stacking. This is the tendency for one purchase to lead to another. It is known as the Dodoro effect. It states that obtaining a new possession creates a spiral of consumption that leads to additional purchases. This is marketing tactics here or just marketing psychology. Example, you buy an item and you end up purchasing its accompanying accessories. You buy a couch and you end up restructuring your whole living room 
with new furniture and you end up buying a coffee table and this and replace this and get a plan. I'm not just getting one plan, we get a plan for my other room and this room and that room. I know this because this is, I'm in a new place now and that's something I've been doing uh, on purpose, but at the same time you get the Dodoro effect uh, begins to pop up and you begin to get things that maybe you don't need Everyone, you know what the real, real example is? You go to the supermarket, you don't have a pre, predetermined plan of what you're going to get, and you end up getting a whole variety of stuff, some of it you don't need, some of it which will expire, some of it which you'll half finish, you waste food, and you waste money, and then on the icing on the cake, cause a little more destruction in the environment if you care about that. And so, the door effect screws us up in many ways. So, predetermined plans actually ameliorate this, they reduce this, they eliminate this. Many human behaviors follow this chain and cycle. Sometimes great. You go to the bathroom, you wash your hands. Or you go to the bathroom and you leave and don't wash your hands. <laughs> There's still, you're still getting uh, the action and behavior. Oh, well, I should keep going. It's, uh, because really, it's, you go to the bathroom, you wash your hands, you put the dirty towel away, your hands are clean. Okay, less likely to spread bacteria and viral particles. You don't wash your hands, more likely to spread uh, bacteria and viral particles. Get someone sick. Tick, right? So it's this chain of cycle where one thing leads to another, leads to another, leads to another. Okay? Why is this important? When it comes to building habits, you can use the connectedness of behavior to your advantage. One of the best ways to build a new habit is to identify a current habit you already do each day and then stack a new behavior on top of it. This is what I was saying earlier with the I will at time at location after. Okay, so this is habit stacking. So you stack a new behavior that you want to do on top of a one that you already do. So you can now develop an obvious cue and prompt for that habit. In addition, you select a cue that makes the trigger specific and has a location. Example, I will do 10 push-ups after I close my laptop lid next to my desk. Or I will do 10 push-ups next to my desk after I close my laptop lid. You need an instruction on how and when to act. You know, like the, those, those watches, the Apple watches that detect how long you've been sitting for and how long you've been sedentary for? That's the cue. Like, that's a, that's a trigger-specific cue to get you to stand up. I am fortunate where I've invested in a standing desk, and my cue is physiological. So when I know to sit down and change position or stand up and change position is based on time. I can auto-regulate it pretty well for myself. I'm pretty intuitive in that, in that sense, but you don't even have to leave it up to, like, intuition or, or like, you, you can set an alarm for yourself. When should I stand up or just... To walk up people are like ah oh, my house is a mess oh, my, it's gonna take me hours to clean this no it doesn't have to uh you can make it easier and one way is every time like you leave the room you, you cue yourself i'm gonna grab one item this is what i do right i grab one item and i transport it to where it needs to be transported to okay i'm in the kitchen i'm gonna clean one thing away and by the time the day ends, the mountain of responsibility that you have to uh, perform is reduced because you've spread it out and it's, it requires less willpower, requires less decision making. It's more autopilot type of autonomic behavior that can make tasks easier. So this habit stacking, uh, to continue from that, the more tightly bound your new habit is to a specific cue, the better the odds are you will notice and when the time comes to act. So you want to make the cues obvious, specific, timely, and have them at a specific location. So you want to define all those endpoints or all those inputs. So, for example, one I used to... Forgive me for using these examples time and time again, okay? It's the field I'm in. It's the profession um, I spend most of my time in. And it's something I identify heavily with through my identity. But before I go to the gym uh, and I train, or before I, any type of exercise, it doesn't even have to be weight training, any type of exercise, I used to train in the afternoon. So I would have to pattern interrupt myself in the middle of the day, set alarms for myself, after I finished two, three hours of work after my last meal, to get up, exert some willpower, 
and that would be like it would there would be friction it would be like ah, i'm on a flow i'm in a flow right now things are going well but i gotta go train so if i don't do it now it's gonna get too late and it's gonna interrupt i can't you know xyz can't train later so what i did i flipped it i put my exercise any type of exercise sauna running cardio uh, weight training yoga whatever in the morning and so the habit the how i got this was after i woke up it was very simple after i woke up obviously you go to the bathroom most people anyway after i exit the bathroom i'm giving you specific detail because you, you need to make it realistic and like actually accurate i'm trying to give people an idea of what how what they can do after i exited the bathroom went back into my into the bedroom i didn't put on regular clothes i put on whatever clothes i would use to train in and that these are clothes i don't walk around in these clothes around my house right these are not casual attire this is this is uh, attire that is specifically associated with training with exercise so that would cue me to then promptly go leave the home and go to the gym because those clothes were not associated with work or leisure or any other habit except exercising in okay and so you could do the same for whatever habit like it could be i need to go study or i need to go read or i need to go like do x behavior i need to step into meetings it's like all right change your uniform your uniform can be used as a tool to change your state right everybody has different clothing for different like like i do for when i do these videos right strength aside i don't wear anything usually right i'm shirtless for these like i have just a touch more professionalism <laughs> i have a shirt on for these ones right but in previous videos i haven't so but i distinguish them right when i do this if this then that if these types of videos then i do this if these types of videos then i do that if i go to the uh, after i leave the bathroom i do this that triggers me cue to go out so it's a specific cue and habit stacking that i've done and if you're struggling yourself with any type of uh, creation of a new habit it's like use the tools of your environment of like a uniform clothing to trigger a specific cue and craving to do a response reward behavior and the formula for that is after current habit i will new habit at x location at this time after i pour my this is after i pour my cup of tea each morning i will do this take 10 breaths with no distraction after I get home from work and take off my work clothes, I will immediately change into my workout clothes. Before I pick up the fork to eat, I will say one thing I'm grateful for to the person I'm sharing the meal with or to myself. When I hear my partner walk in the door, I will walk over and greet her with a hug and affection. Finances. When I want to buy something over $100, I will wait 24 hours before purchasing it. Kindness. When I pass something on the, someone on the street, I will smile at them. Minimalism. When I buy something, I will give something away. And so for each of these categories, from mindfulness to minimalism, there is a specific... Uh, all these different examples that, that you could use for whatever you're trying to work on. So now we've tied the desired behavior into something you already do each day. So you're taking advantage of the natural momentum that goes from one habit to the next and the initial behavior is the cue for that desired behavior. So typically the cue would be something external, but now the cue is another behavior. When I leave that bathroom, when I finish what I'm doing, what I'm doing there, that's the cue. Enter my room, oh, enter my room. That's the cue. All right, workout clothes are on. Uniforms on. Locked and loaded, ready to go. So you can go to uh, James has uh, another. He's had a lot of resources for this book. AtomicHabits.com, habit stacking. If you want to Google that, you can find that there. So that summarizes essentially how we can start new habits, how we can stack habits on top of each other, and why it's important, and how important implementation intentions are for assuming and performing a desired behavior that you want somebody to do 
or you're looking to do yourself. We forget it's like these are tools that you can use to help other people around you too. These are very useful tools for me being my profession. Like I have to facilitate behavior change and psychology, psychological change frequently all the time, okay? But everybody wants, usually most people want the people around them to be better. So we can use these not just for ourselves, but be better ourselves and then use them as tools to, to help other people if they want it and if they're looking for it. So habit stacking, implementation intentions, after current habit, I will, and then just some great examples and, and justifications on, on how we can we can hack our ability and re- sorry, reduce the friction to start a new habit and how doing taking action in spite of having less information usually will get you there faster, even if you make an error in which you can pivot perform and perform accordingly still to a better capability than if you had waited for all the information. So next video will be how motivation is overrated and how environment matters more. And if you want to see that or see more of them, you can subscribe, hit notifications on YouTube so you YouTube can actually show you them instead of doing whatever it does with its cheeky little uh, algorithm. And you, or you can, if you prefer, you can listen to it on all podcast platforms. I put snippets on these on Instagram, a bunch of other little snippets of other philosophical, psychological, human behavior, quotes, thoughts, my life. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.